A few weeks ago, I presented a five steps strategic framework to uplift the science and technology, the science and innovation in Pakistan. Uh, this framework, the strategic framework, uh, was developed based on my uh, experiences of working with the scientific communities in agriculture and the livestock sector. Uh, I was able to understand their problems, the challenges that they face, and based on that, I present this uh, strategic framework. I believe that if we uh, further develop this strategic framework, uh, it can resolve uh, and solve a lot of challenges and the problems in uh, the field of technology development that Pakistan faces today. So let's go into a little bit of more detail uh, in what, why the technology is needed, what are the requirements of research and development, and why this strategic framework is important. Uh, but let's start first with understanding uh, the need for the technology. One of the reasons that Pakistan, the industry, the commerce, the trade, uh, everything really uh, is left behind is the lack of technology. Uh, because we don't have the, the industry don't have the technology, the agriculture, livestock uh, doesn't have the modern technologies. Uh, this is the reason why our productivities are low, our qualities are not that good, and because of which uh, we lose the competitive edge. Uh, we we are unable to fetch a better price uh, for our produce, uh, and sometimes even don't get an access to uh, you know the higher end markets which demands a better quality. So. Because of the technology, the lack of it, uh, we have not been able to be as effective or have been able to develop at the pace uh, that we could have if the technology was available. So technology, in my understanding, have two primary components. Uh, the first component is the, the hardware, uh, the physical component, and the second component to me is the, is the soft component. Let, let me give you uh, examples. So for a hardware or the physical component of technology, uh, we can have the machinery that we operate in our factories, a seed, a hybrid variety which produce uh, more yields than, than the traditional varieties, a vaccine in, in case of, of a medical uh, research and technology, uh, a, a cow which gives more milk. So these are all the physical uh, sort of physical manifestations of technology. Uh, but other than the physical manifestation, and physical manifestations are always required, uh, and obviously more focus goes towards physical uh, technology because we can see it, we can feel it, we can touch it, and we know that it exists. The, the area which normally people don't uh, often uh, consider uh, but are equally important in technology are the soft component. Uh, I, seg I, at least for my understanding, have always segregated the soft component into two further classes. Uh, the first class is that of uh, processes and procedures. So even if you bring in the hardware, if you don't apply that hardware in a specific format following the specific procedures, uh, you know, you don't plant the seed in the right season, you don't give it the fertilizers that it needs at the right time, it's not watered at the proper time, it will not produce the results. So, so those procedures which makes the hardware perform at, at optimal. The other part of the soft component is uh, the knowledge part uh, because scientific communities, not only that they, uh, they develop the hard component and the procedures, they also build a lot of knowledge around it. And that knowledge is then transferred uh, to uh, the management of, let's say, a private sector company or the workforce through skill development programs and trainings. And through that knowledge, the human competence is developed to a level where they are able to, uh, first of all, use the technology, the hard component, and also in a way where, and the, the procedures, following the procedures which are defined by the scientists. So, so A, uh, technology has a hard component. B, it has a soft component. The soft component is further divided into the policies, procedures, and systems, uh, and the knowledge, the human competence. So this is the whole 360 degree understanding of technology. Uh, in terms of access to technology, there are two uh, possible sources. Uh, the first source is that of uh, importing the technologies from overseas. 
and uh, no matter how advanced a, co a country is in its research and development they always need to import uh, some technologies from overseas you can't be uh, absolutely self-reliant in uh, technology you will always need uh, sometimes to partner with other countries sometimes to simply import the technology you know, from another country uh, the problem with imported technology often uh, in context of Pakistan is that uh, uh, first of all uh, it has the compatibility issues we have smaller workshops when it comes to production sector uh, our farms are much smaller than you know those in the other countries so uh, the other countries have developed these technologies big technologies larger technologies the conveyor belts and big machines to operate on the bigger farms uh, whereas our uh, industrial and agriculture uh, sector is, is based on smaller workshop uh, based uh, small farm based uh, uh, so a lot of those technologies are not really cannot really be uh, financially justified in, in the context of a small farm or not even operationally uh, possible to uh, use those technologies so the technology which is developed overseas in, in, in the other countries sometimes do not come in and, and uh, adjust properly in the local environment and therefore uh, the gap remains. The other problem of course is that of cost. Whenever a technology is developed overseas, it will always be more expensive than the technology which is developed uh, in your own country. Research and development has, has a certain role in both these uh, regards to make the technology more relevant for the local producers because it is the technology developed through our own research and development is based on uh, our the needs of our people the, our industrialists our agriculture uh, sector people uh, but also uh, then it is slightly less expensive and affordable for the uh, for them so uh, considering that even if you import some technologies and get uh, your needs uh, met by imported technology there is always is and there will always remain uh, be a need for developing local and indigenous technologies now the problem uh, here is that uh, while Pakistan has a good institutional setup uh, we've got a couple of thousand uh, institutions which are operating cross country uh, doing research and development uh, the, the problem really is that of uh, uh, first of all the, uh, the amount of money that goes into uh, research and development. So, let me give you a comparison here. Uh, Pakistan in 2018 spent 0.3% of its GDP on uh, research and development. Now, you compare that with India, uh, again a country in the region, uh, it spends 0.9% of its GDP uh, on research and development. And China, 2.2% of its GDP uh, on research and development. So, not only that our GDP is less, so the real uh, in the in the real uh, dollar term or in the real rupee term, uh, the spending is uh, low because again our GDP is low. But in, even in the uh, percentage term, we are far below the regional uh, average. And of course, the world average is again quite higher with the countries like US, UK, the European countries, which spend uh, a lot more in research and development than uh, what we do. So the primary problem remains that of uh, low spending, low low focus towards research and development and then there are uh, certain other problems as well but uh, for those problems we, I think we'll do cover them in more detail when we discuss the, uh, the strategic framework uh, in our next uh, program so please uh, stay tuned give me feedback so I not only that I feel encouraged by receiving your feedback but it's also helped me to uh, improve my content